In this chapter, we're going to look at topics related to measurement. In this lesson, we're going to look at the surface area and volume of composite figures. All right, hi everybody. In this lesson here, we're going to be looking at the surface area and volume of composite figures. And what we mean by that is they're going to be figures that we're, we're building from other smaller, simpler figures. So we're just going to take a look at kind of example after example after example. So for the first uh, few here, we're going to take a look at volume. Volume is actually a little bit easier to work with. Uh, conceptually, it's a little bit more complicated, I guess, than surface area. But practically speaking, when you're evaluating it, it's a bit easier. So for example, for this one shape right here, what we've got here is a hemisphere over top of a cylinder. And so it's going to be the volume, the total volume is going to be the volume of the hemisphere plus the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of the hemisphere is going, was going to be five, uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed, okay, or 4 pi r cubed over 3, and then we divided that by 2. And then we're going to add to that the volume of the cylinder, which was the area of the base, which in this case would be pi r squared, okay, because the base is a circle, and then we can multiply by the height. So now, just taking those pieces and plugging it in, this is going to become 4 thirds pi. Well, the radius of our, of our hemisphere is 4, so this is, will be 4 cubed. That would be the volume of the corresponding sphere, if I had the whole sphere. But I don't, so I'm going to divide that by 2. There's the hemisphere. And I'm going to add to that pi. Well, the radius of the, the cylinder is the same as the radius of the hemisphere. And that actually, that actually makes sense. That, that's why they fit together here. So that's going to be 4 squared. And then the distance between the two bases of the cylinder is 11. That's my height. So I put the 11 there. So now this becomes just calculator work. And actually, I'm going to do this over here. It's a little easier to, <laughs> to make this work. So this will be 4 divided by 3 times pi times 4 cubed. Okay, that's the, the formula, sorry, that's the volume of that corresponding sphere. Divide that by 2. There's my hemisphere. I'm going to add that to pi times 4 squared multiplied by the height 11 here. So I'm doing this all in one step on my calculator because this is going to help me minimize uh, rounding errors. Press enter, and I'm going to get that my answer is approximately, if I round that to the nearest tenth, 687.0 centimeters cubed. The 6 is going to force me to round that 9 up to a, to a 10, essentially. So I bring over that 1, and that 6 goes up by 1, and I get 0 0.0 there. Okay, so there's our first example. Now, all right, in this problem here, what I've got is I've got a what looks like a, a pyramid, a rectangular pyramid, whoops, over top of a, a rectangular prism. Or actually, sorry, this is a square prism, but it's, it's, um, it's going this way. So basically, the, the shape that's on top, the, the pyramid that's on top has got a, a rectangular base. That's okay. So first of all, let's take a look at the volume of the pyramid is going to be, first of all, the, the area of the base, which is going to be length times width. And then we're going to multiply that by the height. And then for the pyramid, remember, we divide that by 3. So length times width times height would be the corresponding uh, volume of the rectangular prism divided by 3. Then we're going to add to that the volume of this prism down here. Now it's a square prism, so the area of this base right here is going to be side squared and then multiplied by, by the height here, which in this case is going to be that 15, the distance between the two bases. Now, as long as I understand what's going on here, let's plug in the numbers here. So length and width of the, the base of this pyramid, well, the length is going to be 15, and the width here is going to be 13, OK? And I'm grabbing those numbers from the bottom here, because when I slide up here, those are going to be the same. The height is 12, so I'm going to multiply that by 12, and then divide that all by 3. And then over here, my base is going to be 13 squared multiplied by 15 as I go across here. Now it's just calculator work. So here we go. 15 times 13 
times 12 divided by 3 plus 13 squared multiplied by 15. And I get that my volume is 3,315 units feet cubed. Okay, so there we go. Just a matter of grabbing the right formulas and putting them together. All right, for this question, well, we're putting a cone onto a hemisphere, and it kind of looks like an upside down ice cream cone, okay? like something had dropped. Anyway, when we put the volumes together, it's going to look like this. We're going to take the volume of the cone, and remember, the volume of the cone is going to be one third the volume of the corresponding uh, cylinder. So the cylinder would be pi r squared multiplied by height. So it's going to be the area of that base multiplied by the height. Then we're going to divide by 3. That's my cone. And I'm going to add to that the volume of the hemisphere here. Now, the hemisphere is going to be half of a, half of a sphere. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's the formula for the sphere. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. Okay. Now, all i got to do is plug in those pieces here. So pi times, well, the radius of that cone and the hemisphere is going to be 30 millimeters. So 30 squared. And then the height, the distance from the center of that, that face there to the apex is 47. So I'm going to multiply that by 47. Divide that all by 3. Then we're going to add to that 4 thirds. Okay, so here's, here's my sphere. 4 thirds, the radius again is 30 cubed. Okay, that's going to be a big number there. And then I'm going to divide by 2 at the end because I only need half of that sphere. Now it's calculator work. So pi times 30 squared multiplied by 47 divided by 3. There's my cone. Plus, now here's the sphere. 4 divided by 3 times pi times 30 cubed, okay, and then divide that by 2 because it's just the hemisphere that I'm working with. And then, oh boy, that's, that was a big number. So that's going to be approximately, what is that, 100,845, and to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 0 0.1, and I can't remember what units they were, ah, millimeters. So millimeters cubed. Okay, there we go. Okay, now for the next three questions here, we're going to focus on surface area. And surface area can be a little bit more difficult uh, just because of w the number of faces that you get when you, when you put two shapes together here. So anyway, let's take a quick look here. So I've got a pyramid on top of uh, a square, uh, square prism, okay? So my surface area is going to consist of the exposed faces here. Now bear in mind, the bottom of the pyramid is covering the top of this prism. Those faces are not exposed. So I don't need to worry about those. So I tell you what, let's, let's start with, the, let's start with the, the pyramid here. Now because the, the base of the pyramid is a square, it's going to be 10 by 10, each one of the corresponding triangles are going to be identical. So there's going to be four identical triangles here. So and that's going to be length times width divided by 2. Okay, that's going to be the, the exposed lateral surface area of the, the pris, uh, pyramid. I'm going to add to that the parts that are exposed of the prism down here below. Now, the base is exposed, okay, and that's going to be length times width, but there's only one of them. Okay, When we previously did this, we had the top and the bottom. That's not the way this works, though. We've only got one base here, and then we've got four exposed lateral sides here. And in this case right here, each one of those, again, is going to have a length and a width. And those are all going to be the same, okay, 10 by, by 11 here. In fact, quite honestly, I probably shouldn't have written it the way I did here. The, the base is a square, so it's not really length times width so much as it is side length squared. That's probably a better way to think about that. So now let's just plug in the numbers that we see. So for the triangles, this is for the pyramid up top here. The base here follows from the base at the bottom. It's going to be 10 times, and then the height of that triangle, okay, which is kind of like your length and your width there, the height's going to be 9. And remember, for a triangle, we divide that by 2. 
Then the base down here is going to be 10 squared, okay, the one base. And then I've got four sides, those lateral sides uh, of the prism. And each one of those is going to have a length of 10, uh, sorry, I should say a length of 11 and a width of 10. Probably makes more sense to think of it like that. Length of 11 and a width of 10. So now this is just calculator work. 4 times 10 times 9 divided by 2 plus 10 squared plus 4 times 11 times 10. And we get 720 centimeters squared this time because now we're talking about surface area. The units are going to be squared units. Okay, in this particular question here, what we've got is a cone over top of a prism. So once again, when we find the surface area, we're talking about the exposed surfaces, and the base of the cone completely matches with the top of the cylinder. So those two faces there from each shape, those are not exposed. So when we find the surface area, we're only looking for the exposed faces here. So for the, the cone, it's the lateral surface area that's exposed. Now that's going to be pi r s, the slant height. Now when I take a quick look at that, that cone, I'm not seeing the slant height. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to get that figured out here. For the cylinder, usually I would think about the two circular bases here, but I've only got one of them that's exposed. So it's going to be simply 1 pi r squared, not 2 like I would normally do, just the 1, plus the lateral surface area here. And remember, what we do is we, we kind of slice this down the side and open it up, and you get a rectangle where the length of the rectangle is 2 pi r. It's the, it's the length of the rectangle is going to be the circumference of that circle when you wrap it around. And then you multiply that by the height, the distance between the two bases there. So here we go. Now we're going to plug in numbers. So this is going to be pi times r. The radius is going to be 3. So that, that'll be true for both the cylinder and the, the cone. Ugh. Now I'm stuck. Okay, Because I need, I need the slant height here. Well, this is going to be 3, and the height there is 2. Well, that's just going to be a Pythagorean theorem problem. I'm looking for s, so I know that 2 squared plus 3 squared is going to equal s squared. OK, so 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. When I put those together, I'm going to get 13. So that means s, well, I'll just do it down here. That means s is going to equal the square root of 13. So I can plug that in right here. And I'm not going to evaluate that right now. I'll just, I'll just incorporate that into my calculation when I go to the uh, calculator. Plus, and now the rest of this is pretty straightforward, 3 squared plus 2 times pi times 3 times h. Whoops, sorry, h. I don't mean h. I mean 6, because I know what that is. So now, this is just the calculator work. Pi times 3 times the square root of 13. Let's get out of there and add a new term. To, uh, sorry, new term here. Pi times 3 squared plus 2 times pi times 3 times 6. So there you go. We got all the pieces in there. Press enter, and we're going to get approximately, when I round this to the nearest tenths, 175.4, what are my units? Centimeters squared. And there's the surface area, or the exposed surface area, of our composite solid. OK, and for our last question here, we are, we're looking back at that upside down ice cream cone. Okay, so our surface area is going to be made up of the exposed surface of the cone and the hemisphere. Okay, well, once again, there is a circle at the bottom of the cone and a circle at the t uh, at the top here in this case of the hemisphere, but those are fitting over each other perfectly, so they're they're actually covering each other up. They're not exposed. So for us, we're looking for the exposed area of the the cone, which is going to be its lateral surface area, pi r s plus, okay, now the hemisphere, the part of the hemisphere that's exposed is half of a sphere. So the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simply divide that by 2 because I'm only doing 
I've only got half of the sphere there. So now let's plug in the numbers. So pi, oh, look at that. I've given you the diameter, 30 millimeters all the way across. That's what we mean when we have that full line across there. So I just have to stop for a second and think, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Ah, that means my radius has got to be 15. Ugh. Again, the slant height, but I don't have the slant height. So once again, I got to go through and use the Pythagorean theorem. So 15 squared plus 37 squared is going to equal s squared. Now this time I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. So 15 squared, 225 plus 37 squared is 1,369 is equal to s squared. So if I add those two together, we get 1594 is equal to s squared. Now it might be too much to hope that that works out to a nice number. And it doesn't. So I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 1,594 is equal to s. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm, when I plug it into my equation here, I'm just going to use, it, uh, use the calculator to figure it out anyway. So whatever. Plus 4 times pi. I already know that the radius is 15 squared. Then we're going to divide that by 2. And so now it's calculator work. So pi times 15 multiplied by the square root of 1,594. And I got to get out from underneath that radical, so I press the arrow to get out of there. Plus 4 times pi times 15 squared, and then we're going to divide that by 2 because we only need half of the hemisphere. And I get approximately 3,295.1 millimeters squared. So there you go. Just some examples to give you an idea of, of how to handle these composite solids. Um, that doesn't mean that we've covered kind of every example you can get here. And sometimes we're going to rely on you to be a little bit creative with, with how you uh, kind of attack some of these problems here. But at least you've seen some examples. You get an idea of kind of the flow uh, of thinking there. Okay. Hope that helps. Mm -hmm.